Okay, recording. There you go. Okay, we would like to call to order our meeting at 6.08 p.m. Todd, do we need to do a roll call? I'll just call the names uh, based on the faces I see in the order on my screen. So uh, Wolfgang. Here. Lindell. Here. Jeanette. Here. And last, but of course not least, Jessica. I'm here. Um, I know we have business, but um, as I'm thinking of like the, my capacity and be able to take on things, I still want to be very much a part of this, but also am wanting to hand over chair if someone else would like to be chair, I'm being very transparent. And I look at Jeanette and Lindell and Wolfgang. <laughs> I don't know that I have the capacity. I apologize. I wish I did. Yep. So that's what you're asking. You're asking, would somebody step forward and do this? Good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> um, I am happy to do it. I will be also transparent and say that I am not at all sure that I know right now what it is we're trying to do and what is online. But if we can talk that through today, I'm happy to step up and lead from there. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Lindell. That would be great. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this meeting today, from my understanding, sorry, I'm not looking at, sorry, I'm completely out of order, Todd. I, I know we're supposed to be reciting. Okay, let me get back into order, sorry. Uh, let me pull up the agenda. So sorry, Todd, just, it's a lot. No worries, okay. we're, we're, we're all cool here. You take your time and we're, we're ready for you. Just like, nah, just jumping into it. Just want to be really efficient, but there, I know there's an agenda. Um, do we have to recite our mission, Todd? Is that so I'm trying to pull up? Uh, you, you, you're more than welcome to. It's, it's on the agenda because folks tend to like that. You, you can, you can skip it if you want to. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I move that we just skip it. I'm Okay, that's fine. Um, so I think the only business is- Oh no, Wolfgang looks like Wolfgang wanted to do it, maybe. Okay, I'm go sorry. ahead. My heart is broken. Uh, I'm okay, happy, I'm happy to lead it. it. I have it pulled up. Do it. I see a human do rights it. commission without yeah. reading it chaotically. All right, yes. go for it. Yes. Act as a strong yes. advocate to justice and justice equal opportunity and by providing citywide leadership and guidance in the area of civil rights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wolfgang. Um, so I think the only agenda item my internet will load is basically new business or business. Um, so my understanding of this meeting is for us just to discuss um, our thoughts and potentially um, put together I, ideas for, um, not ideas, we have ideas and what we want to focus on as far as um, what we want to put together for um, outreach related to the commission and what we want to potentially give attention to um, city council. And so today we're trying to think about that plan. What does that look like? Um, Victoria has been doing a great job sending us like upcoming um, events. And so just kind of brainstorming, like what is our of the, so not just the, to the city council, but what is this um, focus the um, community engagement was one of the focuses we're saying we're going to be doing of the four for the Human Rights Commission today is just supposed to be a discussion of what we think that looks like. I think nothing has to be finalized today, but more of like, what do we need? Um, what's within our purview? What do we, what information do we still need to get and kind of developing and discussing a plan for it? Yes, Wolfgang. Um, and part of that conversation, I'm curious if we could also discuss how the, the mission of the community engagement subcommittee would be different from the housing policy focus and then the like the government um, subcommittee. Because so I could see the government one having a lot of focus on like city council engagement too. Would it be helpful if I put up that summary of identified focus areas where you can see kind of the things that you brought up in the mm -hmm. retreat? Thank you. I can share that. Hold on for. Yes, please. So the funny thing that happens, of course, was when I share my screen, I don't know what it actually looks like. So you're going to tell me if I've got it right in just a second for my second screen here. 
Is that it? <laughs> yes, thank you. Good. Okay, good. Because I have no idea what you're seeing. I'm going to scroll down to community engagement because I think that's what we we're talking about. At least on my screen, that's that's centered now. Is that right? Yes. 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 Okay. And if so you need ask, to move it, let me know. So walking, so housing has its own focus. But what else were you asking? This was the, the separation of, of community engagement and then government, which I guess I'm seeing that that now broken out into equity and city government review. Did we go yeah. over this in the last um, we did the last meeting? Okay, that's why I'm out of the loop. I was not there. No, 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 no worries. Okay. Um, so it's more engagement across all um, of Charlottesville government bodies. And then community engagement is sort of out, non government focused outreach. Okay. I'm tracking. What okay. do you mean non government focused outreach? I, I, uh, I guess I'm, community, I'm, I'm reading community member concerns, town hall, in person, um, share HRC initiatives with community members, social media, um, local community groups. It's like a lot of like non governmental engagement versus city government review is engage with city police department, oversight board, city council equity, city county budgeting. So it's a lot more government focused. I'm just trying to make sense of what the individual responsibilities would be. Okay. So do you need further clarity or are you okay? I think I'm, I think I'm good. Okay, sorry. Um, so something I just wanna give praise to is I think that I appreciate everyone on here who's really interested in the community engagement. Um, our town halls have been wildly um, successful. Um, I know we've started the discussion about social media and um, potentially that plan and then continuing to engage with other um, boards and commissions. Um, I think something that I have loved and learned from our town halls is like there's there just in general, there's so much happening in Charlottesville and us being a body of people that are coming to the other say we want to hear all the voices. I think we've done a great job of identifying potential players. And so as we're putting together like plans for the community, part of part of the things that I was thinking about and love for us to like iron out is like I know that there's some upcoming community events. I'd love for our group to decide like we're going to do so many within a year. We're going to do maybe five or four or however many the number. I always like those numbers because they're my favorite numbers. Five particularly is my favorite number. Um, but whatever, whatever we decide, like how many we're going to do per year. Um, if we are wanting to engage with and and um, come together with plans that may potentially help other components that are listed here, you know, what are the commissions that we need to identify? What are the other city boards that we need to identify to be a part of the community outreach? And the last thing I want to say, and I want to hear from you, Jeanette, I see your hand, um, is... We were, uh, the idea came up in um, our retreat that I would love for us to be in more in-person events and maybe potentially hosting them like on a regular basis. Maybe it doesn't have to be every month, but um, dedicating like certain times to say like, we'll be on the downtown mall, we'll heal directly from um, community members because we are limited by the number of people that are engaging with us on a virtual, in the virtual zoom setting um so those are those are my thoughts and Jeanette yes you had your hand raised you're muted Jeanette you think I would learn by after three years <laughs> um I was I had raised it earlier when Wolfgang was asking about like the focus of the different committees and one thing I don't know if we want to do this and I could even offer to draft it but for me it really helps to have like a a value statement or a purpose statement um so if we wanted to like pull from, like these are the things that we'll be doing, but if we wanted to have like a sentence or two that says like um, the focus of the community engagement committee is to, you know, align with our values of engaging community. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but if we wanted to like somehow like articulate that in a phrase um, as a form of guidance for each of the committees uh, or that might be too much, but if we wanna do that, I'd be happy to draft it. I actually find those very, very helpful because it, 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 it both tells the community why we're doing it. That also helps us decide whether what we're proposing fits with that or not. 
It's just a nice way to help. Uh, it's a nice way to control mission creep. <laughs> Which we, I know all of us who want to see good things happen are very prone to doing, right? Because every action sounds like a good idea. <laughs> yes, we can do that too. <laughs> Let's do that too. Does that feel like too much, Jessica? Okay. Yeah, I would say, I would just, I'm happy for whatever you'll draft and send to us. I think it'd be important to mention within it that um, this is also, you know, it's priority two of focus of what the Human Rights Commission is focusing on for this year. On a potentially related note, um, Victoria brought up today uh, the brochures that she presented in the last meeting, and I think her her goal was to get those finalized um, at the beginning of this month so that we could go ahead and send them to print to print because they are they're nice ones. So we're not going to like just print them on paper. We're going to get them printed somewhere else. So it look so it looks a little better and more professional. Um, it, it, She's still seeking feedback. I'm going to do a final review of them tomorrow, um, you know, just to give her my last thoughts and feedback. But if if you all have anything in that regard, it would be good, you know, if you could send it to us this week, that would be amazing um, because I think we're going to try to get them put a put an order in to have them printed next week. So. And if you want me to like resend like updated versions, I can also do that. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah, if you can send updated versions, that would be good. Um, so when we're talking about, this may be a little bit out of order, um, but when we're talking about um, in-person events, which I agree, I think are, are going to be very important. I think that we should also have a commitment to making them blended, making them available, making whatever we do also available by virtual attendance in some way. I know that it makes things a little bit more complicated, but I also know that I think we've engaged with more people in the last two and a half years than in the two years or so before. Um, when we were meeting in person. So I, I think we've gained some attention and some conversations that because people can actually join by virtually when they may not be able to physically get to the downtown mall or physically get to locations. Um, so if we do do in-person events, which I'm fully supportive of, I think that we should commit to figuring out a way to at the very least have someone with a cell phone streaming it and reading questions from people who want. I think we need to figure that out and think about it. How can, how can we can still have virtual participation as well? And we may decide we, it's impossible, but I, I think we can do it. Yeah, I'm happy for us to explore. I think my initial thought on that is I'm thinking about the people that are not engaging with us at all virtually, right? Being on the downtown mall is potentially getting people that are not, but happy to explore what a live stream would look like downtown. That's what I'm thinking, you know, even if we just do a live stream and we monitor, somebody monitors the questions in Facebook or something, you know? I think it's a low barrier. Like it's, thanks for bringing it up, Linda. Yeah, that's all. I just, yeah. I'm trying to imagine myself, right? I mean, I will come to some in-person events, but I won't go to all of them because I'm, you know, I'm still not comfortable with in-person in events in general, right? And I think there's still going to be a lot of people like that. And so whatever we can do to keep them access to us is great. Yes, Wolfgang. Um, I'm curious if this, like, are we allowed to, like, 
are there any platforms that we're not allowed to stream on? Does it always have to be through sort of like a city sanctioned webinar or can we like use our social media account to stream live through there? I'm just curious if there's any prohibitions on that. I don't, I don't honestly know, like for, for these webinars, right? Um, this is the platform that they give us to do publicly notice stuff. So if we want the public to be able to participate through like signing up for the webinar, this is the only way we have. Um, if you wanted to then, I don't know how you would stream. I was thinking about that as you were talking about, I was like, okay, so how does that, how does that work technically? Like you've got this webinar, then how do you take this webinar and stream it? I don't know. Can you do that as a as an attendee, I don't, I don't know if you can like stream it on your own Facebook. I, I that's beyond my, my knowledge. Think, so yeah, go ahead, Lindell. Yeah. So I think that my, I think technically this is not an issue that the challenge would be that it, let's say that I said, okay, we'll just use my Facebook account and we will live stream. I would then worry that my Facebook account would be subject to, to FOIA. FOIA. Yeah. Right. And, and I would not want my Facebook account to be subject to FOIA. So I think we would probably want to use a city account, a Facebook or something just for that reason. Maybe it's not streaming live, but more of it's like a, hey, we're holding an event on this date. If you have any questions about this topic, please write us in and like we will add your voice to the discussion. And maybe they're not able to listen to the end result, but they're still able to ask questions. I mean, you could also solicit questions in advance, like you did with the poll for the town hall, and then for those who can't attend, and you could solicit them not just with the poll, but you could solicit them with the, from those who want to go to in-person sites and solicit questions that you'll then discuss during the meeting. Um, that's another way you can gather those things for people who can't participate. Um, you know how do you then disseminate the answers after the live meeting is another question right people would then want to know what what you talked about if they can't access it that's another so, question you know how do they get that but the so other actually and i just want to say this real quickly i think the other thing too with our outreach downtown specifically was that we didn't want it to be like a commission meet like it's not a commission meeting we're doing any business like we're not like gonna then post this and like it's a very like informal the two to one dynamic where we don't have to post it like so then I worry Lindell about the like the route you're going is like we have to post it and we have to have okay. it and then I just think it's like the to me I want okay let me just let's say this thought because it keeps percolating in my mind I just have to say it and again I'm not opposed to anything what we're discussing is like I would like the in person to be extension of things we're already discussing so like I I just think about the town halls that we had there were very engaged people that came and were there but I also know and feel like there are people that were even a part of that conversation we didn't need to hear because we didn't have something in person and meeting them where they are and so I don't mean for this to be like a specific event thing with a specific focus but it's more of like hey did you like here's who we are do you have questions like here's a flyer did you have thoughts about what we're doing like I I don't know. Go ahead, Linda. You're about to say something. Yeah. So I, that that is different than what I was what I was thinking about. I think if what you're describing is, and maybe that we just say, okay, two commissioners are going to be sitting on the downtown mall at a table with some flyers on this date from this period of time. Please come by and have an informal chat with us. It's not a meeting. It's just two or less commissioners. That's entirely different. And I I. I do not necessarily think that a live streaming or anything would be appropriate in that case. I was more just thinking that it was going to be, there could be three commissioners there, that it could be a real meeting. And if that were the case, I wanted to make sure it were more popular, I mean, more accessible. Having said that, why couldn't we also just have Zoom sessions where only one or two commissioners are listening and invite people to come in via Zoom and continue the conversation as well. Right. That's all. But, yep. So I think I misunderstood you, Jessica. I think what you were describing is much more informal and would not need um, some sort yeah, of. Yeah, I think 
think we should discuss this in our meeting and, and I think we're saying very similar things. I think it's in the same vein of like, I just, I, I the town halls for me have been a good um, like pilot that as we've done them, we've got a lot of good, good engagement. And I think I just want us to keep that engagement as best we can in virtual and in person. Um, I tended to focus in person because we've been all virtual. Um, and I know, again, there's people that are, we're not reaching, but I, I love for us to wrap up this particular discussion. We're just saying like, how many do we want to do that's realistic within a year time frame? We actually don't really have a full year because we're half of the year in, but for the next six months, you know, how many do we want to do? Um, and, I, and I like the idea of Lindell doing like, like one for one. If we do one in person to commissioners downtown, we can do one you know, okay. correlation. So if we were to do that, I would volunteer to do, I, I am going to be really honest that I'm going to do the least number of in-person things that I can get away with legally, right? Like if I have to show up in person to be on the commission, I will show up for a meeting, but I'm probably not going to sit in person on the downtown mall, right? However, I'm perfectly happy to sit in a Zoom room anytime, right? Like I would commit to having four Zoom listening sessions, right? Um, and maybe that's what we should do now is just pick a number and put it on here. Maybe that's what we're gonna do. I'm, that's I'm okay with doing that. Or at least proposing that for the larger. Linda, what I'm hearing from you is that what you're proposing is pretty much equivalent to a town hall, right? Like posting public notice and, and getting this, like this webinar set up is not, it's not terribly difficult, right? Like now that we have, um, as long as I'm not overlapping with any other boards or commissions that want to use one of the two city owned webinar accounts, we can set up one of these town halls. Um, it'll be interesting to run it. Last time we had support of two commission, two communications staff to run the town hall to just like juggle with the permissions and cycling people in and out, but we can probably do it maybe a little bit bumpier, but I think that's, that's, you know, if you're thinking about virtual events with people that are listening sessions, it really sounds like the town halls, which you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. And so then that pairs well with what Jessica is proposing, um, you know, a series of in-person tabling events, um, some of which could overlap and be the same as what Victoria has proposed. She's, continues to add new ones to the calendar that, she, you know, like I think she told me about three more that she's going to do um, today. Uh, so there's lots of those opportunities to table. Um, and whether it's one that you all organize um, on your own or one that you pair with Victoria on is up to you. But um, I think the two of those things will definitely meet your goals when you're talking about engagement. Yeah, I'm happy to sign up. And we could even do the same kind of thing, right? Like, if, as you were saying, Jessica, you have tables and you have flyers and you have things like that. We can still do that virtually. We can show them on the screen. Here's this flyer. If you want one, type your address in the, I'll either email you a PDF or type your address in here and we'll mail it to you, right? I don't think we're going to get hundreds and hundreds of people showing up and asking, but we could offer the same thing. Yeah, the only thing I want to distinguish, Todd, is I think it's very different from what I, what I was proposing to town halls, where I feel like town halls are a very like specific topic that we're talking about and then moving forward, where I'm just trying to say like making us available to the public to hear from mm -hmm. them, listening yeah. session. Yeah, no agenda, just hearing. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I mean, true, and I think you could even say it's a it's just a listening session in, in a town hall format. Like, hey, we, this is a no topic town hall in which we're here to hear feedback. Um, I think that sometimes it's helpful to give people a little bit of guidance, but, um, and I think your in-person things are definitely gonna be more geared towards just whatever topic comes up. I think the virtual events, like you say, when you when you provide a, a guiding topic, it helps you actually get some, some really genuine feedback if it's open-ended. I have no idea what people will bring. You could try it though and see what happens. Sorry, I keep having ideas if somebody else wants to talk. Because the more I'm hearing from, from Todd on this is maybe what we could do, Jessica, is the in-person thing that you're proposing, which I think is really attractive, right? Like you're just on the downtown mall and you're going to get people, if you're sitting there, you're going to get people who didn't even see the notice, 
they're just walking by and they see you. So you're going to get a very different audience, which is great, right? You're going to get that, oh, there's a human rights commission, right? I mean, you're going to get that kind of audience. Maybe what we could do virtually to supplement that is to follow up on what I think was one of the really powerful things about the town hall was how many people from the community organizations who showed up and had never even talked with each other before, right? And were eager to have more conversations. And maybe that's what we can do virtually is create that space and just invite them to come. And we're just providing the space. We're just saying, come here and talk. You know, you guys met at this, at our last town hall. Why don't we continue this conversation and you're all invited to come back. And we're just providing that forum and that space. I don't know. I think that sounds good. I, I, I like the idea of four um, virtual. Do we want to do four in person on the downtown mall? Sounds good to me. Let's change that. I'm not an official member of this committee, but I will happily show up to in person and hang out with one of y'all. You want to be an official member, of Wolfgang, or you just like? I no, I really want to be part of the housing equity assessment. Um, one okay. because I think it's just Mary at this point, um, and I have ideas for that, and I want to okay. be able to. So you're just hanging focus. around tonight. I'm hanging. Just... I'm hanging around tonight to listen because I missed last commission meeting and didn't want to be too much out of the loop but I mean, yeah I so consider me as a you can tap me for downtown mall hangouts aren't any of the subcommittees also open to everybody like we anyway that's I think. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's why i'm here you're not a member that's why i'm here <laughs> so i had to step away for a second i apologize um i think I, I wasn't sure if you were saying that each of us are committing to eight events or overall we'll do four. Yeah, right, no, four, four overall, eight. we're doing four in person, four, yeah. four, four, four. And I'm happy to do in person ones, especially if they're outside. Um, and did you talk about how we, like, Victoria's coordinating that, right? And she'll just let us know when there's something we should jump on. I uh, know we haven't gotten into any of the logistics and how okay. yet. I, mean, it, they could, I was just trying to lock down the how, the number, and then I think okay. now the discussion is like the how we make that happen. Thank you. And and just to clarify too, these don't have to be staffed by just us four. We can let anyone on the commission know. We just don't have more than two of us at any one of them. Okay. Yeah. Just. Okay, I'm sorry, to clarify, I thought it's okay if more than two of us are at an event. It's not a meeting, we're just at an event. Like if we're all sitting at the table, that's not a big deal. Yeah, as long as we're not talking, like not making any decisions. That's correct, yeah. Todd? Yeah, I think, and I think just, uh, you know, just to not raise any flags, sticking to two is a good thing. And, you know, our table's pretty tiny anyway, so more than two of you behind it will, will look like a crowd. So um, yeah, just to be on the safe side, if you stick to two, that's great. And you can always rotate people in and out, things like that. That's, but I, yeah, like legally speaking, I don't think you'd get in trouble if you're just hanging out um, behind a table, if there were more than two of you. Right, uh, Todd, I can't find the most updated list that um victoria sent out but yeah is this something we can then like um let her know and then we can best coordinate like those in person with events that may be happening yeah if you if you just shoot her an email and say um you know we're looking to engage in um you know up to four different tabling events either ones that you you all create on your own and and without victoria or ones that she's planning on going to anyway and you could just join with um that's what you could do. And there's a lot coming up. So yeah, I think just shoot her an email, you know, and she'd be happy to send you her current list. Lindell, can you send Victoria an email? All right. What do you want me to do? Let me pull this up here. <laughs> Todd, you said that. I was like, nope, don't have the capacity for nope, that. No worries. Okay. So <laughs> Lindell, you're just sending Victoria, or if you want me to, I can send her an email and just copy you, copy the commission and just say, hey, can you send the current list of tabling opportunities uh, coming in the next whatever six months that you're setting up, if that would be helpful. 
I think that's um, what I'm not sure is if whether I have Victoria's email address. If you're in the Outlook, um, if you start to type her last name MCC, it should pop up and auto populate. But if not, I can send it to her and and then just copy you all. Victoria McCullough, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And this is tabling opportunities. I'm just gonna do it right now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that's what we should discuss is once we do get that updated event, or I think we should discuss it now, but I think we should come up with like the number of like events that she may be going a part of that we can also join. Cause I've enjoyed going to Todd to a lot of our community outreach events. Like it's part of why like I want to be part, like part of this particular subcommittee, um, but I think we should identify today as a group, like what are the in-person events that we'll be doing with the Office of Human Rights. And just to clarify, she probably won't respond during this meeting because she's home now, but just to keep in mind, like there's some big ones coming up, like for example, like um, West Haven Day is a huge one, that's in August. The CRANU event that um, Michaela and Melvin from Region 10 organize, um, I think that's in September typically. That's a really big one, happens at Tonsler Park. Um, uh, I think if we may, we may do um, uh, Silo Sabroso, which is a big like sort of celebration of Latino culture that happens down at Ix. that's a huge one. Um, so those are ones that would be easy and you would see a lot of people because they're huge events. Um, if you want to do smaller things, um, there are the things that she's going to be doing um, routinely with Region 10 in the in the various public housing and subsidized housing communities. Um, and I think she has a few other ones cooking like that that are smaller. And of course, like Jessica proposed, you can just come up with your own if you just want to like grab the table out of the office sometime and set up on the downtown mall. Great. Happy to help you do that. So lots of opportunities. Okay, so we could propose that we do two of our own in person and two with the Office of Human Rights. I don't know, how's that sound, y'all? And of course, this is not this is not limiting like what we can do. I'm just I wanted to try to give like goals for us as a um as our ad hoc committee. So that's something that we're communicating to the public. Like you can for sure see us at these events, here are our high touch points. You can always contact us anytime, but it gives us like a focus for like for this year where there's not mission creep. We're very like intentional about what we can do and put resources to. Um, so if I keep pushing for numbers, that, that's why. How does that sound, Lindell and Jeanette? Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I was gonna say, I didn't think we needed to be specific, but then you just responded as to why we did. So thank you. Yeah, I just think it helpful full to communicate to the public like where like where we are, what we're doing. I, I know that's the feedback we've gotten, like, where are you guys? And it's like, well, we'll, we'll be here at these things. And again, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't do more, but it's nice to say like, this is what we're able to do, and we're being very intentional about these. For the record, um, West Haven Day is Saturday, August 6th. Folks usually roll in pretty early to set up tables. Um, I remember we used to get there like maybe eight, sometimes seven thirty to set stuff up. But we have a we have two tents. We have we have a folding table. We have wagons. We have tablecloths. We have all the stuff. So we can make it really easy. <laughs> I will be there for work, so I won't be able to represent the commission. Okay, I just I just sent this to to Todd, to you, and to Victoria, and I I said if this is confusing, Todd can provide clarity. <laughs> so I just brought you back in, Todd. Glad to do it. Bring me back in whenever it's useful. <laughs> Thank you. So I think the last thing, not to keep us on here too much longer, but um, something Lindell said earlier, I do think we should be intentional about creating spaces for community members to, like, to come, like, like, like what we had in our town hall meetings, like we had great people that came together, and like, great, this is great, we should be all talking and having conversations, so I, I'd love to hear um, from you guys about how we may be able to intentionally um, make that happen, also with the caveat of I'm also okay with us saying like, let's wait to figure that out to hear from 
Housing Equity Committee in the in the I'm sorry the Housing Equity and I can't read it it's really small um, the Equity in the City Hall government like maybe that will come naturally out of like those discussions but I just kind of wanted to pose it to our group because I do love what Lindell, Lindell said and what I was initially thinking about this too is like creating a space for us to come together um, and partner in something together within the community members yes Lindell. Yeah, so I, I think you're, I think you're right about that. And what I was thinking, Wolfgang, is when we're talking about housing, because you know, I think that was the, that was just so amazing to me how many ideas that people had and how many people who are working in this in the community that, it just seemed like some of them had never really talked with each other before or had found, you know, they were just kind of excited about the opportunities for collaboration, perhaps. And so maybe this is where the community engagement committee can help the housing equity committee by working together and saying yeah let's do a town hall right let's let's continue that conversation let's invite all the people who were there at that town hall and maybe more and just say here we're going to create this space here's two hours we're going to open this room and we invite you all to come and we can provide a little bit of structure around it but mostly we want you to talk to each other Right. I mean, that's what I, and, and for me, the strategy might be for us to just book them a few months ahead and say, this is when we're going to do this. We're going to have this space and then work with the housing committee, for example, to put that little bit of structure in place and then figure out how to invite everyone. I don't know if that sounds like a, a decent idea. Thinking back to our last town hall was really important because I feel like the so if, if one of the the main things that the the housing equity subcommittee wants to tackle is assessing the state of continuum of care for people experiencing homelessness or difficulty accessing emergency transitional or deeply affordable housing, then those organizations showed up for us at those town halls, um, and I think another one might might pull more organizations out who are in this space, but I think probably the work of that subcommittee is reaching out to the organizations who did show up that night and be able to understand some of the nuances of people who are trying to navigate the system. Um, um, so what I'm hearing is um, maybe potentially putting planning one out or, or having targeted for our ad hoc committee to put together like one or two just however we want to call them discussion sessions specifically around housing and maybe we could potentially support the efforts that the housing equity committee is doing within their vision of moving forward helping to, is that what i is that sorry does that reflect what i heard or not <laughs> No, I think, it, I don't know if we need to keep doing it because I think it may be some of the same actors in the space. Like we may have find different organizations that show up to want to talk to us. Um, and it's always good to know what people are thinking and feeling and experiencing. Um, but I think the bulk, from what I'm reading of the agenda that was created last meeting, the bulk of the housing equity assessment is to like continue pursuing a FAP agreement and to do like fair housing testing and to like potentially partner with home to make that happen and to try to, I guess, quantify some of the, um, the numbers of housing units that are available for emergency transition and deeply affordable housing and then assess the state of continuum of care. And so I don't know if organizing town halls would fit under that. I, can't, I, need, I need to talk to Mary. I don't know what Mary wants to do. We haven't met yet, but I don't know if we need to do town halls too too much yeah so i'm thinking that the reason that i was thinking we could bring some of the housing people together with the community it, it, I'm, I'm kind of thinking not just them talking to each other but also bringing them with the community because what i heard at the, at the first town hall there were public members of the public who were had a personal interest in housing right 
And then there were the servers, the people who were trying to connect people with housing, right? And so they were talking in a very public space. And I think that there was some new information for people in both sides, right? I think that especially the public maybe got some insight into the complexity of housing in the city by being able to hear people talk about it in that forum, right? At least that's what came across to me. I heard members of the community expressing some sense of having new information that they hadn't had before, new insight. Maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that seemed pretty valuable. Um, Lindell, if I can piggyback on your idea. Sorry, Jessica, do you want to jump in? No, I, I, yes, I did. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so I, I want to jump in just to say I like this idea of kind of what I'm hearing from Lindell is like more of being a resource. Like I think that's it's what we are and what we've done and we what we've shown with the Human Rights Commission is that we also we don't we don't want to also just hear the issues and the concerns, but also to be able to put together people intentionally to provide like a resource. And when that happens, it's the dynamic that Dundell said, like you're starting discussions and, and things may come out of it, but the initial attention could be just providing a resource. So maybe at the the four virtual, we can ask some of our community partners to be there as also a resource to the community. Mm -hmm. is, is kind of what I'm kind of hearing from you, Lindell. Is that what you were thinking? Yes. Yes, and because yes, because what I worry about in any kind of thing that we do is if the if the public doesn't hear and have a have in, have input into the discussions that the organizations are having, then it just becomes a vacuum. I, I don't know. I mean, I have been on both sides of public service, of using public services, and people who are providing services to others often assume that they know all the issues, right? That they, they know all the issues that they need to solve. And I think that it can be helpful for us to provide a forum for the public to say publicly, I need the services and I'm not getting them. And then to have those who provide those services have an opportunity to say, well, here's why, or, hey, I didn't even know you needed that, or here's who you should be asking, right? I'd like for us to be able to provide that interaction between the public and those who provide services. I think that's what I'm, I'm saying. I think we can provide that role. Yeah, I'm on board now. You sold, sold me on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the long list of things that we're attempting in this, this coming year, and I'm like, oh, gosh. It's a uh, lot. That's a lot. I have a question about but, that. But, but also, the town halls are really important to be able to, as you said, be able to get community engagement, community involvement, and you know, the people who are most impacted by any of the policies that we're recommending to city council in the end. They should be, um, you know, first and foremost at, at the table. Um, I have a question. I think what you're saying, and I'm, I feel like I'm having a hard time following just because it's the end of the day for me and I'm tired, but um, like I hear what you're saying, Lindell, and it sounds really important. I'm just not sure like how that's the role of the Human Rights Commission. Like if, if I can see that it can be something we aspire to and we want to do, but um, I think like our role is to be a liaison to the city, right? And so these community engagement opportunities are, are opportunities for us to hear from them. We can add that as a goal, you know, having um, both or organizations there to hear from people and, you know, to, that can always be something that we do, but I, I'm just careful to think that that's not really um, our charge. Jeanette, can I respond to that? Um, I've discussed this um, with Todd and what I've noticed from like our town hall meetings and just the traction and the attention that our um, Human Rights Commission has received. Um, we are ears to the ground in a way that city, the city council is not. 
And so I would argue almost the difference is that maybe it's not like directly, but the, my argument would be that it is in that we're maybe getting information from the community members where there are these holes in these pockets. So let's say, for instance, the information that we gathered from the that housing town hall, it adds on to all the other conversations that Todd is having, Ashley is having, other community members are having, and then we package it together to human right to the city council to say like, these are the holes. Like we, we've we've brought these people together. This has organically happened. We're seeing these inequities within our cities that are blah 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 blah. We're not. We can't personally address them, but city people need to be aware of them. And if we're not having these conversations, like we, that is the that is the power and how we can use it to city council is how I. Yeah, I'm it. I'm saying the same thing, Jessica. That I see our purpose as to city council. But what I heard Lindell saying was to other organizations that we also should be a conduit between the community and the organizations that serve them. And while I think that's really valuable and important, I don't think that's our, our role necessarily. It's to city count. We are, go ahead, Todd. I don't wanna let you finish. I just wanted to try to dovetail. I had already, I was just repeating myself that our role is to be that bridge between community and council. Our role is to advise council. Um, I, think I can't hear Lindell, but I, I still don't hear what Lindell is saying, not doing that, but I will let Lindell speak in response to what you're saying. Yeah, I, go ahead, Todd. I think you might have some. Well, I, I think you all have a have valid ideas that I think will work well together if you kind of think about it structurally, right? So let's talk about a town hall as a format, right? You could, knowing what topic you want to, um, to engage with and the public to engage with and provide feedback on, you can then invite community organization leaders as potential panelists for community members to ask questions of if they have questions about the services they provide. That will then generate the feedback that you need to understand where the gaps are to create a proposal to council, right? Like that, okay. that's how you connect those dots, I think. And furthermore, if if the topic that you want to engage with is housing, I would highly encourage you, you know, I've included some of the materials in previous agenda packets, but there's, because there's been a lot of discussion on this topic, it would be really helpful for you to kind of read those things as background before launching into a town hall, because I think it will inform not only the questions um, that commissioners ask, but I think that it'll give context to the questions and responses that you hear from the public, as well as what you're hearing as <clears throat> sort of the positions of the different organizations. So those things I think would be important, but for that reason, narrowing maybe narrowing the topic for these town halls um, to what you wanna discuss is really helpful. Yeah, I, I think I I really thank you, Todd. Um, that that is really helpful, and thank you, Jeanette, because I think that's a really good point. I mean, it's a really good question. Like, we should be able to articulate why we're doing this and how it fits in our mission. And I think the way Todd articulated is a really good answer. That's what I think. Right? It's like we do need to advise City Council, but we need more information in order to do that. Right? And the information that we'll get is from the people of, of Charlottesville, right? By listening to them. And the best way to actually listen to them, in my opinion, was what happened at that first session, right? Which was when they were able to have a conversation with people who were providing services. And we could see where the gaps were because they became really apparent during those conversations. So I don't know, it just seemed like a good model to me. I was really struck by how much information came out of that that town hall from the public. So I want to go back to what I proposed earlier and that we pin this C part of number two C of our community community engagement and, and be able to hear from all the other four um, focus areas. And then we can come back and, and then be able to better focus those conversations. We can help facilitate that. Um, is my proposal, but happy, because I feel like right now we're in theory of what we should do. Um, I kept using Todd housing just because that was the example that we had. Not, I wasn't saying because we need to keep doing that, um, but I don't know, what do you guys think? 
I, I think we should just with this bullet say like we are willing to put together and host these engagements with other community members and organizations, the local community to do what Todd said, um, to be able to provide cases and information to provide to city council it falls within what we're trying to do. But I think it's it's more of a collective like we want to support the collective other three focuses. Mm -hmm. that sounds good. Yep. Okay. That was all I had. So Lindell, is it clear for you of, of kind of, so I would say the next steps is just if, if oh, we'll, we'll summarize the notes, but um, if you could potentially um, just we'll work with Jeanette, she's going to put together a statement for our ad hoc committee and then just work on just sending something to the, to the commission prior to our meeting, because I realized that that was a downfall our last meeting that was on me that I didn't send this out to everyone but if you can just summarize like go get the notes but just summarize and say hey we met today we just we decided that we're going to do two in-person meeting or sorry four in-person meetings two of them will be in coordination with the office of human rights with what Victoria is putting together we're going to do four virtual meetings and our last bullet of um, cooperating with others like kind of just summarize what we just discussed that way they can have it for the upcoming meeting is that is that a, is are you okay with that? I'll try to do that. Um, and the only record, like don't, there's, it's more, it's information to provide to them, but also if they want to start thinking about if they're able to be in volunteer for the in-person and, and the virtual listen se listening sessions. Okay. Once we know what the dates are. Yes. Once we know dates. But for them to at least have that on their minds. Okay. Sounds good. So are you, after this meeting, comfortable with now being the chair of this ad hoc committee? Okay. So that means the next time I need to run the meeting? Yes. Yay. <laughs> My least <Yeah>. favorite. <laughs> Linda, I'll coordinate with you to create an agenda, too. So that would be. Oh, yeah. Thing. We have to do so that, too. We'll be in touch that way. <laughs> this is how much I love you, Jessica. <laughs> oh no, I, I'm, I'm happy Lindell to like, if you want to send to me and have me be a part of it, I can like, yay, nay, here are my edits. I'm not completely disengaging, um, but I, I, okay. I know you just don't want the burden anymore. And I totally, yes. agree. if you I could read it, I can respond to emails and say, yes, no, that's all. Okay. Thank you, gotcha. Lindell. You're welcome. Love you too. <laughs> um, I have no idea what the agenda is supposed to say. Um, are we supposed to do public comment, Todd? Sorry. We Ange Khan was on in the attendees for a little while, but it looks oh. like she's dropped off. So um, you have no members of the public currently in attendance. Oh, okay. Oh. Hey, Ange. I always appreciate her supporting. Um, sorry, I'm trying to pull up the agenda. Um, before I close this out, were there other things, um, Jeanette, Wolfgang, Lindell, that were also on your mind for the effort of what we want to do as um, the Community Engagement Ad Hoc Committee? I do have a question for Todd, though, just to be sure. Our meeting next week is still virtual? Meeting next week, yes. Yep, we're, until, until further notice, um, I had the lead team meeting with uh, city manager this week, and they they emphasize that we are all still virtual, except for the state mandated boards and commissions that have to meet in person. So at least through September, that's when the council's emergency order um, goes up right. for reconsideration. That's kind of the expiration date, so to speak, on that. So okay. um, thanks for saying next week, because that means I need to post notice again. And uh, Jessica, we need to come up with an agenda <laughs> um, on that same track. And I'm sorry to just like plow ahead here. Would you all like to schedule your next meeting? Um, and the reason I say it is because um, what I've found through kind of multiple tries at this is that when we try to schedule the meetings via email after meetings, we struggle considerably. I think we had four responses to Jeanette's very dutiful poll. Um, but so I'm wondering if we, as a group now, could look at our calendars and just say, next month, a pick a date. Um, that would be really helpful. <laughs> sure. 
Then I'll stop screen sharing too to take that off the screen. Oh, oh. Um, Jeanette Wendell, I, I would propose to latter of the month versus the beginning of the month. Okay. So we're looking at, are we looking at July or are we looking at the latter part of June? I would say latter part of July. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Our next, uh, our July meeting is on the 21st. I don't know if we want to meet before then. Um, yeah, how about a week or so before so we can give them a report like we did this, like we will this time? Like maybe the 13th of July? Or do you want to do it after the meeting? That's fine. We can do it before. The 13th is fine. 13th is okay. It works for me. Jeanette, does that work for you? Uh, yeah, Wednesdays I have a meeting that goes till uh, six. So I, six is the earliest I can meet. Um, and did we decide we don't want to, since it's the three of us, do we not want to do it during the daytime? I can, I can do, do I can do daytime. Um, Could we do like four to five, Jeanette, or is your meeting? I have a meeting at 4.30. Yeah, 4.30. Could we do three o'clock? Three work. Oh, three would not work for me. Oh. Four would work, but um, or two to three, or one to three, or noon. Yeah, one to three would work. Or morning. For you. I'm actually much better in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm pretty booked on Wednesday the 13th of July. I have a morning meeting and then midday and then afternoon. Um, How about the 12th? The, uh, the 14th looks better. Okay, 14th works for me anytime after four or before noon. I'm open. But I propose 10 a.m. on the 14th. 10 a.m. on the 14th works for me. How about Wait, you, Todd? Just... Sorry, I have a meeting 10 to 10.30. I thought that no one would pick that one half hour. Um, 11. 11. 11. 11. 11 Todd, works for me. <laughs> Yeah, that look that looks good for me. Why don't we check the city calendar to make sure that nobody else has a publicly noticed meeting on that time? I'll do that really quickly, unless somebody's faster than me at that. Nope. Nope. Not faster than you, Todd. <laughs> I don't know. I've I've watched you multitask online, Jessica. You you beat me considerably. <laughs> Let's see. So it looks like not to. Do not to. <laughs> It looks nothing. like nothing. The only thing on the 14th is a PCOB at 6.30 p.m. So I bet we can grab one of the webinar accounts. No problem. So the 14th. Uh, July 14th. Yep. At what time? 11, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Okay. And I'll book it for an hour. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you so much for, for nailing this. this. This is a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> than what we just tried to do in terms of scheduling. So I'm going to try, we'll try to keep that up. Okay. So Todd, can I officially close out that meeting at 7.06 PM? Yeah. So 7.06 and I will. Um, and can you stop recording for a second? End I the recording. To I'm going to end the recording now.